In this video, I will demonstrate how I gamify my high school chemistry lessons using Pear Deck, Google Keep, and Google Form. So this means without batches, stickers, and leaderboards. I will take you through my sample lesson that involves an introduction to stoichiometry with an emphasis on how and why to balance chemical equations using the combustion of octane as my main example. Here's my goal for you. As you watch this video, be my judge and determine whether this lesson is a game you'd wish to participate in, as my students have. See what I just did there? Step one for how to turn something into a game is to establish a goal. I just gave you one. But let's pause for a moment and think about the term gamification. In his 1978 book, The Grasshopper, Games, Life, and Utopia, Bernard Sweets, who was a professor of philosophy at the University of Waterloo, declares that a game is a voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. But let me confess, I have never heard of this man before until a Cornell student called Aidan Halfont mentioned him in his gamification series, linked above. Oh, and if you hadn't guessed, Aiden happens to be my son. But I am a high school science teacher, so this gamification definition may seem more fitting to me. Gamification is the process of adding games or game-like elements to something such as a task so as to encourage participation. But if I'm honest, I'm also not the type of person that will implement batches, stickers, and leaderboards. Or should I? Well, now that we've gone over the gamification definition, let's dissect my very simple lesson into the five game components shown here. The first game component, number one, a goal that is non-trivial and achievable. The goal for my students is to complete specific questions related to relevant chemistry concepts. This lesson revolves around stoichiometry, and more specifically, the balancing of chemical equations. How will my students learn this concept? Well, through the active drawing, calculating, and typing a written response to this prompt. Let's read the prompt. In an engine, octane combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. What is the balanced chemical equation for this process? Game component number two. Rules that are some form of arbitrary externally imposed constraints. So questions need to be answered in a finite amount of time. Wait, this analog clock may not work as students these days cannot read time this way. So this digital clock may work better. As another rule, my students may use the chemistry reference tables, but preferably not the internet, whether that be a simple Google search or open AI such as chat GPT. Game component number three, feedback that is clear and unambiguous and consistent with the goal. So I provide class feedback on anonymous student responses that I show on the classroom screen, or I give private teacher responses as a prompt appearing on their Chromebook screen. Game component number four, voluntary participation. Students can choose not to participate. Heck, they may wish to go to the bathroom or they may wait before typing in their response until they've seen some initial answers from their peers on the screen. Because it's sometimes tough to state whether you agree or disagree with a given scientific statement. Game component number five, a gameplay loop that is the core flow of action. A slide appears with a question. Students answer the question. They get feedback from me and possibly from other students in the class. They can then make corrections to their response and move on to the next slide and so on. Upon completion of the Pear Deck interactive lesson, 
I give my students a Google Keep prompt to capture the main concepts of the lesson. See my video on how to make students take notes in Google Keep. You got to record the most pertinent information in your second brain or you just won't remember. This gameplay loop is filled with real-time formative assessments in Pear Deck and comes to a close when I give my students a summative assessment in Google Form that underscores the original goal. What is the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of octane? Now let's go through the actual lesson. Want to join my game? Hope you do, because I'm playing. All right, we're ready for the actual lesson. So you're seeing here two tabs in Google Chrome. On the left, we've got the tab with my actual Pear Deck lesson, but it's still in Google Slides. And on the right, you've got a mock student called Chem Board. And this student is actually going to join that lesson in Pear Deck. So let's start. We're going to click on Home Pear Deck. And please note that you can use Pear Deck as an add-on within Google Slides and click on the Pear Deck icon within. Um, but I'm choosing for today to simply do that actually within Pear Deck. I've already logged in and thank goodness our school has actually purchased a premium account. So that gives you just a little bit of extra features such as a uh, teacher dashboard and um, you can actually see which students are responding to a given slide. Um, if you don't have the previous ver premium version, uh, you will not have that freedom. So I'm now gonna click on the Pear Deck lesson for this particular video. And you notice here that you have two choices. You can do a student-paced uh, Pear Deck lesson, but I usually do a live session. We are currently not in a, a pandemic where students can go themselves through the lesson because they have the advantage of having me live in the classroom. So I'm gonna start that live lesson it's going to launch that presentation, and as it's loading, it's going to give the students a code. Now, usually I click on give students a link, which it copies to the clipboard, and then I share that link with them through Google Classroom. Um, but now that I am here on my own computer at home, I can simply type in the code, and the code is PSVYSC. Purple submarines victoriously yield stoic carrots. Yeah, I want to play this game. So you always get the prompt, how are you feeling today? This prompt is not recorded, uh, although any other student responses are recorded. And because I'm having a marvelous time about to play this game, I'm feeling just splendid. Okay, loading the presentation. So I'm going to hit here, start class. When I click on these three dots, I see some options and I really want to see the dashboard. So open dashboard, sure, in a new window. So here we go. I'm going to make that fit exactly like that so we can see it big. So on the right, in an engine, octane combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So let's see if this student can now uh, answer this question. We are now on a key juncture in this lesson. Uh, my student has answered partly the actual balancing of the chemical equation involving the combustion of octane. Uh, we see here we have one octane molecule, hmm, maybe one, don't know yet, a uh, number of oxygen molecules, eight carbon dioxide molecules, and nine water molecules. So I wanna give this student some feedback. Now, for your convenience, I've already typed in this feedback and I will um, zoom in on that response to show this to you. The first response that I gave was check and count the number of oxygen atoms on the product side. Eight plus nine oxygen atoms is 25. Hmm, 25 should also be on the reactant side. 25 divided by two is 12 and a half. Let's put 12 and a half as our original response. Okay, so let's add another prompt to this student to help out with that last uh, section. Double all the coefficients. 
So we now have two octane molecules. Well, that's 25 oxygen molecules. We have 16 carbon dioxide molecules and H2O. That would be 18 water molecules. Pretty neat. So to balance a reaction, you balance by inspection. You change the coefficients only, shown here in red. You do not change the subscripts. And in case of a combustion reaction in particular, you finish with pure elements. I give my students a Google Keep prompt to capture the main concepts of the lesson. I'm going to go into the Google Keep note of this student, and I simply paste in that image. And this is all about balancing chemical equations. This really focuses on the how, and that brings us to the why. I actually asked chat GPT. I asked the open artificial intelligence uh, bot. And when I typed that in, Here's what I got. A balanced chemical equation is necessary to ensure that the same number of atoms of each element are present on both sides of the equation. So additionally, as chat GPT feeds back to me, balanced chemical equations also help to ensure that the stoichiometry, stoichion, element, metry, measure, that the stoichiometry of the reaction is correct. And we can extrapolate that to say the pharmaceutical industry, to say restaurants as you're cooking a recipe. So that is now the profound ending of how and now why it is necessary to balance a chemical equation. And if needed, they can simply share that note um, with uh, another student uh, in case that student were to be absent, or if I'm the teacher and I'm also recording this note, I can share that note with them. We've come now to the final component of this lesson. Remember, this is still a game. And so I do end this lesson with points. So we've done the Pear Deck, we've recorded the how and the why of balancing chemical equations in Google Keep, and now comes the not formative, but the summative assessment, which involves a Google form. So all the resources are in the video below, but I'm gonna show you my Google form in my window in Chrome. So I do two things. This particular tab shows you the actual chem quiz that I give them. And this balancing chemical equation is basically of a larger concept, all involving stoichiometry, including chemical reaction types. And I'm showing you here several questions, about 20 multiple choice questions that I'm taking them through. I also have a chem quiz bank that they can use, which are just free response questions and they can practice with these questions so that they get better at answering the actual multiple choice quiz questions. That brings me to the end of my lesson. I hope you enjoyed my game. Bedankt voor het kijken en tot ziens. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.